talking with the experts. In episode 567, discover how to build a sustainable, proven driven business that complements your ideal life with Molly Clare. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think part of it is, I think that as we pursue building a business and if it overshadows our life, we're missing the point of why we want to have this business succeed to begin with, right? We want our business because our ultimate goal is to have a life, to have a quality of life. And so it's like in the pursuit of that quality of life, we lose our quality of life, you know? So it's, it's just, um, it, and it's one of those things also that we just have to keep reminding ourselves of, right? Checking in every week, every day. How am I doing with this? Am I keeping my priorities? What do I need to do to help myself to remember that I choose my priorities? Talking with the experts. Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello, welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com.au. Talking with the Experts is all about business, by business owners, for business owners. You can find it on all podcasting, streaming platforms and on YouTube. And today it's my great pleasure to introduce you to Molly Clare. And we're going to be discussing creating your ideal life and business. And this is quite a, a good topic for perhaps this time of year, not only because Christmas is approaching, but since the pandemic, people are still trying to find that work-life balance and, you know, working from home or should they go into the office. So this is just an ideal time to be, to nut those little things out and find out the best plan for moving forward. Now, Molly is a master coach mentor to female entrepreneurs and she's the founder of Holistic Master Coach Training and inside the Masterful Coach Collective, she helps coaches develop superior coaching skills so that they can guarantee results for their clients while designing a simple, profitable business model. Molly believes in the power of a purpose-driven business that can help women create an ideal quality of life. Molly is a seven-figure business builder. She's a proud mum of three. She's a top 3% podcaster and a best-selling author of The Happy Mum Mindset. Molly, welcome to Talking with the Experts. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. So nice to be here. So what prompted you to, you know, uh, develop and write the book about, you know, mums in business and, you know, trying to get, you know, this work-life balance for your clients? Well, uh, it started as it often does with, with myself and my experience of building my business. Um, when I started my coaching business and shortly after I actually started going through a divorce, stepping into becoming a single mom. And, you know, for me, as I, was facing that reality of, of what was happening. It was very, I knew deep down, always, 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 that it was really important to me to be very available to my kids. And I, I just really committed at that time that as I built my business, I would provide well for my kids, well for my family, and I would be available to them. And so just kind of bringing those things together was my business model. And it's kind of been the, the core value that's been there all along the way. And then it's really fun that I, you know, bring that value forth with my clients as well. Mm. So yeah, it's yeah. really important that um, women uh, especially find that, that balance between work, their work life and their 
in their private life because you know we wear so many hats and in a business as a business owner you you wear so many hats and then you you know then you've got your personal life where if you have children you know you're not only just a mum but you're the doctor and you're the nurse and you're the you know the carer and all these other things so you wear like so many hats and sometimes it's just really hard to find out where you can you know balance your life to find your your own personal time just for you Mm -hmm. yes and I think that you know uh, one of the things that I work with my clients on because of course all of my clients are they are building businesses right and they they've come to this work first of all, because they desire to help people in a certain way and because they want their business to support their quality of life. And so everything we do starts with what are your values? What are your priorities? And what do you need to do in order to to make that be what leads the way in your business? And right alongside that, like you were saying, it's it can be easy for us to think, when do we fit in time to take care of ourselves, right? When do we squeeze it in? And I think we have to start with that piece. We have to start with what are my personal needs and how do I build them in first and then make sure that I can, you know, accomplish everything that I need to. Absolutely. Now we're all, you know, when we start a business, you know, we think it's all going to be in a go gangbusters and it's going to be so successful from the very beginning. And and sometimes Mm -hmm. it can be true. Um, but often not, it's not, it it isn't. So how can we build a sustainable business that makes money, you know, in the now and then in the Mm -hmm. longer term? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that um, one of the things that I think is really important for us to keep in mind as we're building our business is thinking about our business activities as things that fall in the category of quick wins These are things that are bringing in money now, bringing experience now, bringing exposure now, right? They have some kind of immediate reward. And then what are the activities that create that long-term growth? So for example, for, for my clients, they all have online coaching businesses. And so, you know, the things that they do to build their list, for example, there is not a lot of immediate reward in that, right? It's it's spending the time, planning the funnel, recording this, testing the emails. And so, so those things are important. And I think that when you start a business and you prioritize only those things and you're expecting this business to give you a big reward immediately, you are going to be pretty disappointed, right? <laughs> and so and, and so there's that. And then um, and then those those um, activities that you can do where maybe it's going to a networking group, asking people to have a consultation with you, you know, some of those things that kind of require you to go outside of your comfort zone like that. And those activities aren't necessarily, they're repeatable, but it's not like you're setting up an automated system, right? They're, they're taking more effort on the regular. And so, so what I really advise is whatever our business is, we think about what are the things that I do? What are the activities that do create those quick wins that bring money in the door immediately? What are those things that I do that are more focused on that long-term growth? And then from there, really assessing what are my needs right now? Because if I have a client who says, hey, I need to bring money in right now, then we need to focus on those quick wins so that they can get that cash flow going and then take the time for the rest, right? And uh, and the complete opposite end of the spectrum if someone says, hey, I don't really need to be bringing money in. I really just want to spend the time building these fundamentals in my business. That's great. Normally, of course, it's a combination of the two, right? And figuring out how do I how do I adequately meet meet my needs in both of these areas? And, uh, you know, which one do I maybe need to prioritize? Yeah, it's really important, um, I guess, you know, in the in the immediate term and in the long term is that we do set those priorities um yes and uh and and i guess work out which priority takes precedence over another um i you know sometimes we we get a little bit jumbled up and we we think um you know everything's a priority when you know we should be staging them into into categories or into steps so that um 
you know, we're not left dangling somewhere and that we're not overwhelming ourselves. Yes, yes. And I mean, one thing I have to say about this, this is a little bit of a a little bit of a tangent, but but not really, because this is relevant for all of us. Um, you know, one of the things I do because I I train my coaches to be very effective in helping their clients, right? And so one of the things that I teach and that we focus on is understanding how to make sure that we have a healthy vagus nerve, how to make sure that our nervous system is well regulated. Because most, most people are running around in a bit of an activated state, you know, where we're on autopilot and we're rushing and we're panicking to get through our to-do list. And when we're building a business and we are in that state of being reactive, we really aren't using our best critical thinking skills. We're not really using that that prefrontal cortex, right? Where we are having a strategy and planning ahead. And so having said all that, I think one of the best things we can do as business owners to ensure that we are prioritizing what we need to and that we are being intentional is going back to that self-care and ensuring that we are that we are doing, there, there are many things we can do, right, to, to regulate our nervous system, but doing things like moving, yoga, meditation, writing, all these kind of things, they, they might seem like, oh, what, that would be nice to do, but actually they are the things that give you the foundation to access that CEO part of your brain. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I think, you know, self-care is the first priority, the most important priority that we should be doing. And, you know, doing all yeah. those self-care rituals. I mean, even if it's just sitting outside in a chair in the sun or, you know, if yes. uh, if it's if it's raining, you know, just finding some some way to get out into nature, to ground yourself on the on the on the on the earth. Yeah. And, you know, just doing those little things for yourself that are really critical to, you know, a, a work and life balance. And, and, and so how can we honor our personal life while we're making all this money? Yeah. I mean, I think that the first thing I recommend, and I actually, I have a resource available that your listeners can, can go and download. It's just, it's on my website and it's an ideal life and business training and essentially it's it's a video it's got a worksheet it's totally free and it it basically will walk you through what are my personal top priorities in my life and and when i think about the time i want to give to those what type of business model will i create to actually be in support of that right and so so that piece is going first and foremost. And then honestly, it becomes, it just becomes something we commit to. Kind of like I was saying in the beginning, right? I I remember the moment that I committed to creating a life that gave me the ability to provide and to be there for my kids. And I was having a very emotional moment. I was so fearful about my finances, everything. I was in my closet. And (laughs) I had just gotten off a very difficult phone call, sorting through everything in my life. And I remember thinking, over my dead body, am I going to work myself to the bone and barely scrape by and never see my kids? It is not happening. And, And that was it. I mean, that was the commitment. And so I think that when, I think when that, when you can be, so specific about what it is you want in your life and commit that your business will be in support of that, that becomes that anchor or like a lighthouse, right? This is the direction that I'm going. I mean, I really think that's, that's the first thing that that's the first thing. That's the last thing. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, if you prioritize uh, and don't, uh, I guess, If you don't take any rubbish from anybody and, you know, you do things your way, of course, you know, along the way, if you need mentoring or coaching, you know, take up those opportunities. But 
first and foremost, it's really up to us as the business owner, as the as the mum, to mm -hmm. you know make those decisions about how you want your work life and your personal life to look like. And you know, like yourself, you know, over your dead body, would you not prioritize your children and and your and sacrifice you know the little things that you need to do to keep sane in this world? Um, and yeah. so that's really, really important that, you know, we remember those things and don't let the business overwhelm us and 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 sacrifice everything else um, to, you know, to make those dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think part of it is I think that as we pursue building a business and if it overshadows our life, we're missing the point of why we want to have this business succeed to begin with, right? We want our business because our ultimate goal is to have a life, to have a quality of life. And so it's like in the pursuit of that quality of life, we lose our quality of life, you know? So it's, it's just, um, it, and it's one of those things also that we just have to keep reminding ourselves of, right? checking in every week, every day. How am I doing with this? Am I keeping my priorities? What do I need to do to help myself to remember that I choose my priorities? Yeah, great, great tip. And, you know, we often do uh, do lose those priorities of, you know, putting ourselves first. And putting yourself first really isn't selfish as much as people say that it might be. It certainly is not. Um, because without us, without our health, without our, you know, mental health being in top prior, uh, top peak, we cannot, we cannot possibly run a business. We cannot possibly look after our families. We cannot possibly be healthy. We have to prioritize the the things that make us who we are. And and you know, and looking after your mental health certainly should be the first thing that you are doing. Yes, that's right. That's right. Our mental and emotional health is such a big deal, such a big deal. And I think that, um, you know, like you were saying, I really honestly think about it as us, uh, everyone listening, all of you listening right now, you taking fantastic care of yourself is your responsibility. I think I feel that it is our, I think of it honestly as a sacred responsibility. Like I have been given gifts and abilities and, and all of these things that I can do in the world. And so I have a responsibility to make sure that I am, I am at my best, right? And when I'm at my best, that is when naturally, right? We can be at our best for everyone. And I can be, you know, happy and positive with my kids and I can be emotionally regulated when my teenage daughter is, is anything but right. So it's like, it's, it's important. We deserve it. And it means that we can be at our, at our best as well. Absolutely. No, I totally 100% agree with that. Um, you know, if we let our mental health slide, then everything else in our life just doesn't make any sense. And, um, yep. and, you know, we we can't function as humans if if our mental health is is somehow damaged or you know not in the yeah. right space. Yeah, and you know as you were talking, I was thinking um, just this last week I was talking with one of my clients who has a she she's a single mom and she has a special needs child, very special needs, and you know it requires so much of her mental and emotional energy and her time. And so she's running her business. She's, you know, she's, she's doing all of this. And, um, you know, we were, we were talking about her struggles with her time. She said, I just, I feel like I'm spread too thin. It feels like too much. And, and as we were talking, one of the things that I said to her, which kind of came to my mind as we were talking just now is, the fact that you are a single mom and the fact that he does have these real needs that are there and the fact that you are a business owner is all the more reason for you to 
first ask, what do I need to feel supported and to be okay? Right? Because she's it. She's the one. She's the one running the life, running the business and helping this child in such a big way. So, you know, any of you that are listening that are feeling like, well, it would be nice if I took care of myself, right? All the more reason. If you have so many responsibilities and people counting on you, all the more reason to ask yourself, what do I need to be okay, to be healthy, to be happy? Absolutely. No, that is uh, 100% true. I, I back that totally because, uh, yeah, as I've said, if you don't have your mental health in the right space and, you know, and, and networking is a great way. So, you know, a friend, a colleague, uh, you know, networking events, um, you know, just so that you can find that equilibrium between, you know, how you're feeling and, and the challenges that you might be facing. There is mm-hmm. always somebody that you can go and ask for help mm-hmm. or just a yeah. listening ear is it can always just be something that's helpful when you're having a really bad day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and obviously I'm a huge proponent of coaches, of mental health help, all of it. I mean, I will always have at least one coach that I'm working. I've, you know, I work with a business coach and I work with someone to help me with my own mind and my own emotions. Because even though I work in that, when it's us, we, we, we need someone else to do that. Right. And then, you know, all the thing, all the people that you're talking about, I have friends that I call when I need a listening ear or, Hey, will you just cry with me? Or can we go laugh? And, and I think one thing I will also say, you know, all of you listening and thinking about self-care, I think sometimes when this topic comes up, it can lend itself to people criticizing themselves and having thoughts come to their mind like, oh, I should do a better job of, right? I should fix my eating habits. I should exercise. I should make sure that I'm doing X, Y, or Z. And then all of a sudden, something that was supposed to feel supportive of us becomes one more way that we're criticizing ourselves and one more to-do list. And so my recommendation, if any of you are feeling that way, is to think about self-care in terms of what do you need to bring into your life to make things easier and better for you? What would feel nice for you, right? Because, you know, uh, going out with friends and, and laughing until you just want to cry, <laughs> That's some pretty good self-care, right? And so so just give yourself permission to really think about what feels supportive and nourishing to you. What would make your life easier and better? That's your self-care list right there. Yeah, and without, you're right, without that self-care, and it's so important, I, you know, I can't stress it enough. And a lot of us don't practice self-care in any way. And we just muddle through and wonder why mm-hmm. things are falling apart. Molly, I'd like to ask you is why do most businesses fail before they even get started? I mean, I think that a few things. Number one is an unrealistic expectation of what is required to build a successful business. And right along those lines is going back to what I was talking about with people not understanding the difference between ways that money comes in immediately and ways that money comes in long term. And so, you know, if someone starts building their business and they're only focused on those quick win activities, well, you're going to burn out, right? And so it's kind of like, this isn't sustainable, this can't last. And on the contrary, if you are just focusing on those long-term strategies and not taking into account your current needs, it can just become a huge stressor. And so that, that's kind of one broader exp- explanation of those unrealistic expectations for sure. Um, and the other one is that I'll offer up for, you know, your listeners to think about is that there is a lot of value in seeing 
where we want to take our business, right? Setting goals, having a plan and moving toward that. And at the same time, um, there are a lot of different ways this is spoken about. I know one book that's pretty popular is like The Gap and the Gain. And so this is kind of the, the idea that I'm talking about. And that's kind of, that's one resource you can look at. But it's this idea that if we are always looking at that gap, right, we are always looking at how far we have to go, it can be really discouraging. Mm. Mentally and emotionally, it's really hard on us because we're operating from this place of, where it's never good enough. We're never going to get there. There's so much to do. And when we can, when we can instead look at this is where I want to go and this is where I started and this is how far I've come, where we're really always looking at the progress and celebrating the wins. That way of thinking alone, just that way of thinking will, <clears throat> will, increase the uh, the probability of you succeeding in your business because every time we notice the ways we're succeeding, it reinforces the idea that we will succeed, mm. right? Every time we're celebrating those wins, we're reinforcing all of the things we want to believe that are possible. We are creating motivation and and all of that can carry us to keep continuing forward. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you have to believe in yourself. Um, even when the things are tough, um, it's not going your way, you know, you have a bit of a crisis. Don't don't think that you're, that you're a failure because I don't believe in that word fail. I think it's just a learning exercise. Um, yeah. That you, you know, you can make things better by by changing tweaking uh, you know something that will bring about that success that you're looking for and you know we all have failures you know or learning moments we all have times when we know we are in crisis and when you know we think that things just aren't going to work out but you know if you just take a step mm-hmm. back and you know you think about all the little successes that you've had along the way you know you'll find out that those little successes will lead to a big success um, into the future. And you just have to keep yes. positive about, you know, how you're going. Yes, you got to keep at it. It's like I always, it's always fun to watch someone. Have you ever noticed when you see someone that kind of seems to have this overnight success where their business just, you know, does so well? And what you realize is it's like it's an overnight success that was, 10 years in the making or 20 years in the making, right? Because even if um, that one business or that one success seems like a standalone, how many things did they try and didn't quite work, right? Or how many learning experiences did they have? So we really do have to stay the course and just keep, keep building our expertise and, and until we get there. Absolutely. Now, if you want to know more about Molly, you can find her on her website at mollyclare.com. And, and uh, so it's M O L L Y C L A I R E.com. She's also on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. And tell me a little bit about my perfect biz link that you've sent to me. Yeah. So when you go to that link, there are actually, I have three different free resources that are available there. And so um, there are two that are specific for coaches. So one is um, some advanced coach training that you can check out. Another one is a leadership training. And the other one is that one that I mentioned, which is the ideal life and business vision training. So that would be a perfect thing for your listeners to download. Wonderful. Molly, tell me a little bit about the Happy Mum Mindset book and where can people find that? Yes. Okay. So the happy mom mindset, I wrote that when, um, after the first couple of years of starting my business, because I focused solely on moms at that time. And you can find the happy mom mindset on Amazon. And there is a workbook that goes alongside with it. And by the way, if you're wanting to work on your self care, it's a, it's a really good way to do it. It really The book outlines some of the common traps that we can fall into as moms, the traps that wear us out, um, leave us exhausted, frustrated with our kids, overwhelmed, all those 
fabulous things that that can happen. So so if you're a mom, if you have kids of any age, honestly, I highly recommend the book and the workbook. It's uh, you deserve it. You deserve something to take care of you. Absolutely. And tell me a little bit about your podcast. What's it called? Where can people find it? Yes. So the Masterful Coach podcast is the perfect place for someone who is a coach. So on that podcast, I talk about effective ways of coaching. I talk about ideal life and business. And it really is a great resource to also hear from other experts so that if someone is building their coaching business and wanting to expand their skills, that's what that's what we're all about there. Wonderful, Molly. Thank you so much for sharing that. Look, I've had an absolute ball listening to you today. It's been an absolute pleasure meeting you. Thank you for joining me on Talking With The Experts. And, and I look forward to perhaps having you on again sometime. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Bye-bye for now. Bye. You've been listening to Talking With The Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time.